something. This is like marching to Selma. This is like the Million Man March. And I remember capturing with my camera and I went home and I looked at it. And I was like, I was on the ground floor. One day I'm gonna show my kids. I was in the action. This is how it was going down. Uh, and then I remember from that moment on, I kind of felt like in the back of my mind, like, I don't know, there's something in the world. There's something I gotta do with this. I was outside of the school waiting with, for, with like waiting with my friend because his mother didn't show up yet and we were waiting for her to show up. And even though I lived like a block away, I didn't want to leave him outside by himself. And some guys from his church actually came and they jumped out the car and they was like, do you know the Lord is your personal savior, etc." And they were talking to me about God. And at the time, I'd never seen somebody just pull up and jump out and talk about God. So I was just like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Then they started telling me how God really wasn't just a concept. He wasn't just a philosophical feeling. And you know, I've been to church at the same time, but you know, as a kid, you don't too much understand it. It's like God loves you. But they were saying that he was a person with thoughts, feelings, emotions, uh, will. So then they prayed with me, prophesied to me, spoke to me things that I couldn't have ever told them. And then that one moment, I from that one moment, I remember my face. I remember I started to think like, yo, who's like God? Like, where's this God for real? I used to like ask God. I used to be weird walking around like, God, speak to me. If you spoke to them, speak to me. Like, what's going on? Period. Like, what's up? How has your day been? Weirdo stuff. And I remember I did a gig for someone. That was 2011 when they jumped out. I did a gig for somebody late 2012. And then that was a friend of mine from high school. She was graduating. And her sister was saying, let me manage you. Let me manage you. Let me manage you. And she was like, oh, I can help you get the business right. I've already done this and that. And one of her requirements is that I come to church with her. To which I was like, oh, that's a weird contractual cause clause. I, I guess that's, that's on the small part, you know. So I showed up. Then they were preaching. It was it was different than I've ever been. I guess at the time I was a different age level too. And then they were calling to minister to people, pray with people, concerns. And at that time, I'm like, that's pretty crazy. Like God out here, you know, not only like balancing the stars and forming the other galaxies, but being mindful of my little scenario. And I'm like this small in his world. So then I went up there. The lady was saying all the stuff that I honestly, she couldn't have known. Stuff that I haven't even told my friends stuff that I wouldn't have told my friends, personal things. And it, at that one moment, showed me like that God was, not saying that God wasn't real, but he was actually concerned about, you know, the daily happenings on, in our lives. It wasn't just do what I say, do what I say, do what I say. It was like, I care that this happened to you, that this didn't happen to you, that you felt this way. And she said a lot that day about my hands and using them for God. And anointing at that time I I wasn't even familiar with the words anointing and all that I was just like my hands I don't see none with my hands and then she was just like yeah no no your hands I see something and she was going on then she said mark this day down February 2nd 2013 your life will never be the same anymore don't forget this day ever so I was like you know what I'm gonna humor her but then that moment and mind you that was all from just the lady wanting to help me with my photography so from that moment I was just like Wow. So every day I thought about it, I went to sleep about it. Every time we, we met up, drew up contracts, did business things, made up spreads, accounting, things like that. One day, this is one of the, like, this is the moment that I was like, this is no joke. We were outside because we were gonna get, we were gonna do a pizza break before we went back to work because I spent most of my time working on the pictures, legal stuff, taking pictures, setting up stuff for weddings. And then these two guys, dreads, tattoos, they come out the car and I'm like, oh snap. Because of the neighborhood we were in, I thought we were gonna get robbed because that happens every now and then. So then they were like, they pulled up to the window, leaned over and then they were talking about like, do you guys know the Lord is your personal savior? And I was like, these dreadhead tattoo, Lil Wayne-esque guys. You know, of course the tattoos were from before, but they were, they, they came one way and then they were just, you would have thought they were like T.D. Jake's son or something like that. And they were really ministering about how God is real and everything like that. Then I was asking them why they did it. And then they were saying, you know, like in the Bible, how it said that, you know, some of the apostles would go to cities and flip the whole city upside down. And I remember feeling from that day on, like, I want to flip the whole city upside down. And then I was wondering, like, how could I do it? I'm like, I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. I'm not the most, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm not the most influential. I, I, I'm not the best at sports I can't be like I'm gonna play ball and then say God did it when I get my awards or my MVPs and yeah I'm well spoken but I'm not the most uh, you know affluent 
And then I went to church one last time with the lady and everyone was really worshiping the Lord for real. They're like, there's a lady dancing. I remember everyone was worshiping, but I, I didn't, I've never seen worship like so free where everyone was just like, I'm gonna do what I want because there's no one around, it's me and God. And everyone was like worshiping. I was looking around and I was there with a couple of business partners because I was inviting them. And she was like, look at this. And I was like, do y'all see what's going on? And they're like, yeah, we in church. And I'm like, no, do y'all see? For some reason, I just saw things differently. I'm like, look at this person. Look at that person. This person's wailing on the floor. This is an adult. Like, how in the world is uh, like a 30-year-old woman doing this? And look at that. And everyone's just like, yeah, whatever. And I remember the moment that I felt that, you know, what it wasn't specifically singing or dancing, but I could use what I was good at was when I looked up and one of the dancers who was ministering, she was dancing one way up and down the altar with a flag, but she wasn't looking at everyone. She was looking up and she was just sobbing uncontrollably as she was like doing all this and lifting her hands up to God. And I remember like I was glued on there. I was like, what is she seeing? What is going on? The keyboard player was doing his thing, but she was just in her own world. And I was like, you know, she wasn't singing in the worship team or playing the keyboard or preaching. But in that one little moment, her dancing, because she was a great dancer, but her dancing, and like it was free. It was just her and her talent, her tears and God. And I was just like, man, what is what is my talent? What is my what can I do to like really touch God like that? Like, so then I thought then I'm like this, my hands, these, you know, these cameras that I have, how do I use that to like show people something? Cause she showed me something without even showing me something in that moment. And then I was just like, man, this is real. And from that moment on, for real, for real, I'd never looked back. Like I said, as a Christian, people think you're perfect or you're without blame or whatever. They always say, you know, the church is full of hypocrites, but that's what the church is made for. So I'm not going to pretend like I was just like, hey, I'm saved and look at me, I'm a pastor now. But I definitely took that moment to be like, this, yeah, this is real. This isn't a game. God is real. He's out there. She experienced something. This isn't just go to church, go home. This is a personal thing. And I sought it after that. And then I was looking for a way to use my gift my skills, my hands in the same way she did. And then from that moment on, I, I at first I didn't know what to do. So I just took my walk with Christ seriously, but I didn't, I didn't even put two and two together. I thought it was something like my pictures. It was something I put down, serve the Lord until like one moment where I was doing like B-roll for a major event. They gave me new toys, shiny camera, for $4,000 lenses. I'm like walking around like, yeah. But I remember like, I started recording a couple of people, but in the moment, as I'm recording and I'm trying to get the best, cause I'm like, man, these moments are so real. It, it took me back to what that lady was doing when she was dancing. Like I've seen, it was grown people, young people, uh, adolescents, teenagers, people really worshiped me. Sometimes they cried, sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they were mouthing out like, like adoration. They were like, I love you. They were using their hands. And I'm like recording it. I'm like really focused. I'm like, no, I'm going to capture this. This is real. People in the world have to see like, these people aren't playing this isn't like let me put on a fresh suit and bring a bible and let me act a certain way this is like this is more than real to me like i was like wow these people are feeling this way so i started taking more and more videos and i did conferences after conferences after conferences and i know some of the videos were used but like every time i saw that it was funny photography always and the cameras always create a cycle every time i saw that and i saw them like look at God a certain way or they worship God or they cried or they had their hands out or they adorned God. It made me like, I want that. I want that next level. That's a whole nother level. I've never been there. I've never felt this way. I want this. And every, every person I recorded, it made me want it even more. So it was like a cycle where now I want it more. And I'm like, now I want to show people more of it. Then the more I show people, the more now I'm caught. And it's like, funny enough, it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And I'm like, I want this so bad. I want to show people like, what what God can do and ever since then I'm like I went from doing the conferences to now I'm like I want to capture the world is even the more subtle things like dragonflies and and hummingbirds not even animals everything people we are we are creation of God like rain like anything that can be caught just to like like God art by God like for real that's how that those moments that God and photography, God bring me to photography, uh, photography bring me back to God in a circle. That's how those moments have affected me to go further with God and in my uh, passion. <laughs>